God Save the King, Tim Pickett-Smith and the cast of King Charles III officially begin their reign over Broadway tonight. We're here at the Music Box Theatre to join in with the celebrations of Mike Bartlett's Olivier winning Future History play. Are you ready to bow down to King Charles III tonight? Oh, absolutely. This is a day as a British person you think you're never going to see it and then you know you get a show where you actually get to pretend it's actually going to happen so I'm quite excited. So are you ready to bow down to King Charles III tonight? Yes, I am. I am I'm absolutely ready. What are you expecting to see on that stage tonight? I was really hoping you'd be on the stage tonight. Yeah. You're British, right? What are you expecting to see on that stage this evening? Uh, I'm something of an Anglophile. I, my name is, uh, I'm named after George VI, um, Prince Ch uh, Charles' Great. grandfather. And uh, I was born the year that he was crowned. So uh, there's a great deal of interest, uh, certainly on my part. Why do you think Americans relate to this show? I think, of course, though the Americans are interested in, in royalty and, and uh, both in a sort of curious, rather affectionate way, but also in a sort of mysterious way. And I, I think uh, that's partly to do with history, that, that, that for better or worse, Britain has this very complicated, at times very bloody, but, but long history. But I, but I also think Americans really understand the idea of a, of a first family. Why do you think Americans are so fascinated by the royal family? Because we don't have one and we kind of wish we did, you know? Our roots are all there, and so now we get to see what it would be like if we had stuck around, you know? What do you hope audiences take away with them from King Charles III? I suppose I hope that they, they take away um, a real sense of what it's like to be such a public family and for that family to embody the politics and the identity of a country, because that's a very strange thing for a family to do. And it's a very British thing, and hopefully American audiences particularly get a chance to sit down for two and a half hours and, and really find out what that's like. So congratulations, opening night on Broadway. How are you feeling? Uh, uh, tired, a little bit, exa well, exhausted, a little uh, excited. Uh, so congratulations, opening night on Broadway. How are you feeling? Uh, relieved. <laughs> I'm glad it's over. Um, it was quite exciting tonight. It was, it was a relatively normal performance with a very attentive audience. So it was a pleasure to do. You've obviously been doing this show for quite some time. Why do you love doing King Charles III? Well, it's, it's a great play. It's just a great play. Uh, and I think it's surprised us all. Um, from the first, you know, first time we read it, certainly for me anyway, uh, how how much, how many layers there are, how deep it can go, and how much, how new we can make it feel every night. There's a thing that happens when you're, I find when you're doing a sort of classic text that it, every single night, like little bombs go off in the play that you didn't even, you hadn't even seen before, and this keeps happening with Mike's writing. So it's such a privilege to do and just such an excellent piece of writing. I, I owe a debt to my character's namesake to my character's real part I also think that that Prince William is a, a, a really he's an inspiration I was not much of a royalist or very interested in the royals and I, I really think that the quiet grace with which he goes about his duties is extraordinary and something that is worthy of our respect and if he's going to be our future king I'm very happy to be one of his subjects why do you think King Charles III speaks to people? I think it must. I think it must interest American audiences because, of course, you kick them on account. You know, you you got rid of it, and you have a different system of of government. But I, I think it's a, a play underneath everything about a family. So then that that always speaks to people, doesn't it? Because it's just about the, the internal politics of a, of a small group of people that we we know and recognise. Although it's about constitutional monarchy and the connections between um, that, uh, the, the parliament and the crown. At the heart of it is a dysfunctional family, which I think travels very well and connects very well whatever country you're in. What do you hope audiences take away with them from this show? Oh, well, certainly, I mean, the sheer quality of my performance. Um, Obviously. No, I'm kidding. I hope that this adds to the intelligent debate about the royal family, and I hope it adds an angle of perspective and some insight that increases our appreciation of them as people and as their position in society.